Lloyd is settling down so he can get, uh, I believe, a uh, last set of interviews in with some prominent reporters. Yeah, might as well start with that. The announce clubs, it's uh, been a while since the announce clubs have been fine. Yeah, Ricky Hatton was... Yeah, I know it's still a point. You know, Ricky Hatton was a family. Okay. My last fight was 10 hours with Ricky Hatton. It's, it's really not a problem. It's just that uh, when I faced... Uh, when, I, when I faced... Uh, Delahoy, uh, they gave me 10 ounce heavyweight gloves. 
So, you know, I could, you know, he chose my glove for me. But, you know, things happen. That's my past. Still so, one. Uh, you know, <laughs> I got the wooden one. And some of the people have, and it's, you know, it's interesting. A lot of people wonder the final couple weeks before the fight how that actually winds down. And you know, as a fighter, I got to tell you, the week before the fight, all the heavy sparring is kind of eliminated. Um, you might do a couple little touch-up sessions. Floyd is really focusing on his timing right now, really making sure he stays sharp on the pads with his trainer. Uh, no injuries, making sure he's very loose. He's stretching. He's eating clean. He's doing everything right to make sure he's prepared for the week of the fight. Now, the week of the fight, he's probably going to do a lot of shadow boxing, a lot of mental work. He's going to lay off the heavy stuff because all the hard work has been done in the training camp already. He's been in camp two and a half, almost three months, 
and he's been sparring, uh, you know, hundreds of rounds and, uh, you know, putting a, really just a tremendous amount of work. So he's absolutely ready, and there's nothing you can do the week of the fight to make sure you win the fight. All that hard work should have been done before, and uh, Floyd Mayweather's a master at that. Say a lot of things, make a lot of comments, and Miguel is real quiet, hasn't said anything at all. Has it been a little bit different with you as far as the build up going into the fight? Well, I think that um, you got a lot of fighters that really don't say too much. So when they do come up on the short end of the stick, it's really not, you know, the press is, the press and the media is not really coming down on the guard because he's a guy that's really, that really don't. Uh, you know, run his mouth or talk a lot. Run it from Ali when Ali talked a lot, and then when he took a, then when he did to take a, he took a loss. They came down, they came down on him so hard. Whereas if it's a guy who's really don't say too much, when he take a loss, they don't really say too much about him. You know, so I think uh, that's the difference. You feel like you have to carry this promotion like you usually do. I mean, on twenty four seven, like I said. It's, you must, it's, it's, you must, you must watch TV, and I feel like at this particular time, I'm carrying the promotion. So that's why I have to, I have to uh, get the fans wild and, and, and excited on 24/7. Do you think people will ever understand that what you do on 24/7? A lot of it is to promote your fights and to generate income for you and your family. But do you think they'll never get it? <laughs> I think they'll never get it. You know, it's, it's, it's business. Yeah. Uh, this, you know, the sport of boxing, you know, you got certain people that look at the sport of boxing. It's just a sport. But when they get to this level, it becomes a business. When you're on, when you're on a pay-per-view, and, it, and, it, and it's, like I said, and it's a fight that's so high, and you're going record-breaking numbers, you got to continue to put asses in the seats. You got to continue to uh, uh, do creative things to make more people tune in because this is a business. I mean, you've tried to explain this many times. Yes. And yes. no one seems to want to either hear or understand where you're coming from. That really you're trying to promote, you know, your I, I, I don't. 